Now then, so here we are for the descent where we're a smidge early. A um, couple of bits to talk about. It's not been all plain sailing. Ay, ay, ay. So, randomly over Bavaria sort of ish, um, and I was tabbed out at the time, full flaps <laughs> in cruise. Full flaps. There you go. Have some of that. Um, took me about 10, 15 minutes before I actually noticed, by which time we descended a significant distance, or height, altitude, um, down to around about the flight level 150 mark, so half of our altitude. Um, yeah, very, very odd. And we were right on the bottom end of the barber pole as well. Uh it was very, very peculiar. Thought I'd recovered from all of that uh, hawky borkiness, and um, yeah, the last hour, it, it, my computer is doing something weird. I, I task manager the lot. It, it's very inconclusive. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I know what it is. I think it's one of my USB hubs is on its last legs and causing issues. Because uh, it's the system, one of the system processes that is just maxing out the CPU every now and then uh, on all cores. And it, yeah, you know, it, it would look fine like this for one moment and then it would hang, do its usual lag spike thing. Uh, but then when it comes back from the lag spike, we'll be upside down, um, which is not ideal. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether this bad flight is. Uh, gonna get report recorded because I've had several over speeds, under speed, flap extent warnings, blah 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 blah. One manual recover don't have thought about it then. One manual recovery I had to do. The autopilot just was having none of it. Um I think it is the autopilot. I'm assuming the way it works on this now I don't know. Um but the autopilot computation something something is happening in a separate thread or maybe on a separate core or well both um, but anyway something was happening such that there was huge issues and it was trying to recover but actually doing the wrong thing um, but we're talking one frame every two seconds so yeah it, it's it's not a fault of the autopilot um, or, or the aircraft at all. It's just if the sim's not got a high enough tick rate, well, you, what can you do? Um, but anyway, so we've you can see us on that spy up there. Um, I've toggled destination departure lines. You know what? I'm going to untoggle that because it's just ridiculous. Uh, there we go. So you've got a rough idea where we are. Um, now I do know what we're going to be doing for the approach, so let's let's get that keyed in. Now I might go offline at the moment. There's only a tower controller on. Um, if they go, then I might stay online. We'll see. But I'm thinking of dropping off uh, purely because of the the issues I'm having. And when we hit Heathrow, it's only going to get worse. Uh, the frame rate drops to crap and you can see at the bottom of the screen here the frame rate's jumping about all over the place it's fairly stable at 20 at the moment which i think is what i got it capped to but every now and then it just drops to 10 and you know, 10's bad but it's workable um but it's when it drops to zero which it has been doing i haven't got much running i've just got my normal sim stuff i've got a couple of bits of things running but they're, they're all very low uh, usage you know stuff you could run on a 1960s calculator so but anyway enough moaning let's get some buttons pressed so he throw it's about as much as I can zoom in because I still need to use the keyboard um, so arrival now, let's see, this is the other issue. I've actually just posted a question on the VATS in UK, VAT UK for, uh, forum. Because, again, they're doing dual runway ops at Heathrow. But if you look on flight radar, he says, uh, 
crikey, what's that guy doing? Um, they are clearly doing singles again. And that's that's been the theme lately, is that sim have been doing duels when Real World have been doing singles, and I know they try and follow Real World. Uh, and I pose the question, I, I'm curious why. I'm assuming, because ironically, that sim is busier than Real World at the moment. Um, but I don't know that for a fact, and it, it would just be interesting to know. So... We're going to go for singles. We will sign off then in that case, unless that guy goes, in which case, yeah, free fall. Um, so 2-7 right is what they're using in real world for singles at the moment. Uh, and the Lamborn won... No, that's wrong. Logan won Hotel, that's what we wanted. So you go, there's a lag spike. Logan won Hotel. Yeah, I see it dropped down to 7 then. Uh, that that was a normal leg spike though. I'm I'm used to them, um, and we're going to transition. Sorry, we're we're going via Lamborn. So let's key that in. Let's have a quick look see at the plan and make sure it looks reasonable. No discontinuities and yada yada. So in we come. There's our top of drop marked by the white arrow. Logan, interestingly, that was wrong. That was set it to flight level 270 whereas actually on the charts it's 250 so I've gone I've gone with the charts um, and then oh click that the wrong way so right yeah we got discontinuity there so I'm just gonna delete that and then we do this little wiggle roo around, basically, I think it's around London City and uh, City Centre. But, to be honest, we're probably going to chin that off. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. We might just go straight in and, and uh, YOLO it. We shall see. We shall see. Let me just check the microphone is actually on. Yes, it is. Should have probably checked that first. Um... But what we can do, we can key in the weather for uh, EGLL. Uh, so we can go to next phase. Um, let's just sort that out. Yeah, we've got a bit of time before top of drop. So the QNH in London is higher than Cyprus, 1020. That's uh, nice and high. Uh, current temperature is 9 degrees. That's a good bit colder than Cyprus. Winds are, that's interesting, okay, uh, 56, 0, 056 degrees, 8 knots. Transition, for some reason, on VATSIM is 7,500. Never quite understood that, but anyway. Because I think it's 7,000 in real world. Anyway, whatever. Um... Radio 200 uh, is standard for Heathrow. I mean, we, we'll be Cat 3, but we'll... Um, what's the weather, actually? No precipitation, visibility... Uh, 10k. Uh, clouds, yeah, it is cloudy. Where's the cloud base? God, just give me a Metar, man. Here we go. Broken, 1,900 feet. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we won't be um, manual, not until, you know, shortish final. Hey, there's cop. Brilliant. Um, oh, and we've just got London Control. Come on. 132 decimal 6. Uh, yeah, so I've just said we're signing off now. I don't trust my sim not to crash. So, I'm gone. 
Okay, so we are no longer online at least. And normally I'd go observer mode, but again, that's just going to add to the issues of frame rate. So let us not do that. Um, so flight plan, I do want to have a quick look see at this actually. Just make sure the altitudes are reasonable. Yeah, they're okay. Um, and because of the issues in the sudden descent and then climb back up and everything, <laughs> that seven and a half tons of fuel or whatever it was supposed to be is no longer seven and a half tons because we had to redo our climb and uh, we were high drag for 20 minutes. So but we burnt you know, a significant amount of fuel uh, in that. Um, I would have hit record if it wasn't my computer lagging like an absolute brute um, and I thought it would actually be capable of recording but it wasn't it, the CPU was maxed out um, I think yeah as I say I think it's a dodgy USB hub that's causing it and firing uh, a butt ton of system interrupts but there we go the computer is fine it's a good computer so um, it's either software or external hardware um, I'm very confident in that. In fact, I'm certain. And the software, of course, you can see that in Task Manager. So, um, And I've had issues with a USB hub before, so I don't know why I'm justifying it, but yeah. Um, cool. And yeah, that's on my to-do list, actually, is uh, I'm rearranging all of this stuff at some point some point very soon actually and then I'm just gonna get rid of my old dodgy USB hubs I've got some new ones so cool beans right so actually there is not a lot to do we're nearly at top of drop um, so I'm gonna clear us down to pretty much final approach uh, in fact I think final approach is two and a half K at London at Heathrow so anyway um, that's still above the cloud base though so we do have to keep an eye on that we'll go uh, tilt below on the transponder so we pick up aircraft that are more below us uh, oh we've signed off haven't we right well that's irrelevant uh, but weather isn't irrelevant so we'll turn the weather radar tilt below uh, because that one is a bit more significant. We have passed a few storm cells. Um, thankfully, none of them have actually been on route. They've been next to the route, uh, so we haven't actually had to fly around anything. But there was an absolutely stonking one, sort of over Luxembourg-ish, probably not quite that far over, more West Germany, Southwest Germany-ish. Um, sort of, yeah, almost northeast France. What's that? Bordeaux? Is that Bordeaux? No, it's um, not. Um, I don't know, Strasbourg. Um, what's that part of France called? It's not Bordeaux. Bordeaux's further south. Um, that's going to bug me. Um, uh, going to really bug me. My French geography is absolutely dire. Grand, Grand S. No, that's not what I was thinking of. Oh, but apparently that is what it is. Oh, Dan, that's what I was thinking of. Ardennes, Champagne, Lorraine. That that bit anyway. Not that it's relevant in the slightest, but it's interesting. Um, oh, so right, I've cleared us down, so let's press the button, go to manage descent. And down we go. Should be fairly straightforward. Um, landing at Heathrow is frankly a doddle um, it's very very easy that that little wiggle is a bit rubbish but as long as you got your speed in check 
then it's absolutely fine. Um, because you can make the turns quite happily. Although we're in a 321. Yeah, no, we, we can still make the turns. Um, I remember flying the 7.0. That struggled. In fact, that, from memory, that wasn't capable of actually turning in the, in the you know, and getting away with it because its turn circle was so large. Um, by the time you finish that 180, there, were, there absolutely was not enough room to do the following 180 and be on for either runway, let alone the run to some right. Uh, got a feeling that was when I flew back from, was it Tokyo? I'm sure that's on the channel. So in fact, that is on the channel somewhere. I did around the world-ish in the 7.0. It was round the world, but the world's a globe and we sort of circled the top bit rather than actually doing a full, you know, max circumference type thing in the bob. Anyway. So down we go. Aircraft's doing all the things. You can see our flight time significantly longer than yesterday. Yesterday was what, four hours thirteen or something? Or was it four hours in a smidge and it should have been four hours thirteen or something like that? Five on the way back. Um that's just prevailing winds. That is prevailing winds for you, in fact. That's interesting. Why have we got no winds? That's definitely on, because I've got the, the things with the things. Is there genuinely no wind at the moment? All right, well, okay, fine. I think you're chatting rubbish. There be blighty! There it is. Right about Ipswich. Just in front of us, sort of area anyway. Is it Ipswich or am I chat? Is Ipswich further up? Yeah, Ipswich is a bit further up. This is more Clacton. I don't know. South of the Watford Gap, it's France as far as I'm concerned. That'll trigger some people. And I'm very aware that I'm from Manchester and living further south than Manchester at the moment. So there we go. Um, cool. So yeah, um, remember yesterday then, things we're watching for when we're on managed uh, speed and altitude. So that's where we've got the dot. Um, there we go. Uh, so we've got a bracket for our speed and we're going a bit fast and we're a bit high. So we can't dive because we'll go even faster. So that is a surefire indication that we need to pull some of that lever. <clears throat> I don't know why this aircraft does it, but it has a habit of spooling up the engines when it's going too fast and is too high. I idle it, man. But anyway, so there we go. Spoilers basically is being exchanged for uh, a higher descent rate at the moment. Our speed is being held reasonably constant. Um, the altitude isn't really coming back, so I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to go full. Still idling, that's good. Altitude's coming back. Once we're back on the dot for the altitude, then it will raise the nose because we want to then reduce our, our descent rate. Um, and then, as a consequence of raising the nose, the speed will come back. Gatwick is our divert, should we need it. Um, but, unlikely. So there we go, we've picked up the pink dot. So we're now at... The exact height for this point in time that the aircraft thinks we should be at. Uh, so now the speed's going to come back. As long as we're between these two brackets, we're golden. That's ideal. It's very rare you, you actually get ideal. Um, I'm going to bring the spoilers back to half. That was a little bit violent. Keep an eye on this. Make sure we don't start... Um, this pink dot doesn't start dropping 
meaning we're not descending quick enough and make sure the speed isn't increasing. Now there is actually a little arrow on the speed. You can just about sort of see it poking its head out there. That actually gives you your the, this, the derivative of the speed actually. Um, so it tells you whether you're accelerating or decelerating. If there's no arrow at all it means you're staying at the same speed. So that actually gives you a bit more of an instantaneous what's going on um, and the bigger that arrow then the faster the, the rate of change of speed is or the derivative of the speed technically that's all it is dv the t right then spoilers away because we're on the pink dot pink triangle now and now you can hear the engine spooling up a bit because it's figured out we're going a bit, we're slowing down. And you see because the engines are spooled up, the arrow comes up. And now we're good on altitude, we're good on speed. So everything is a golden. Uh, I'm going to pull up my charts. We've just passed Sabre, which is Sabre the SLP. I don't know. I thought it was. Maybe not. Maybe I've made that up. Oh no, the SLP is 12 miles from Lambourne. I don't know where I got that in my head from. Um, SLP speed limit point. So at that point, we've got to be below 250 knots. Well, what it says on the chart, actually. Um, but in this case... 250 knots because it doesn't say anything else so that's um irrespective of whether you're above flight level 100 um if you passed the slp then if you're above flight level 100 doesn't matter you're limited to, to 250 knots indicated uh, unless otherwise uh, approved by air traffic uh, and they normally say on stuff like that, no speed or speed is yours or something like that. You know, speedbird six six five Yankee, um, descend eight thousand feet, level at landboard, at uh, landboard no speed uh, would be a typical message. Um, so that means you can do whatever you want as long as you're not breaking the same barrier. Or you're not in Concord. What's what was it called? CLP Concord. No, Concord Maneuver Procedure or Concord Something Procedure. It was a hush hush, never announced on radio. It wasn't allowed to be announced on radio, um, but it was a special procedure for that enabled Concord to do certain things. Basically, skip the queue in a hold was the big one. Um, uh, and sort of do and come in faster, so on and so forth, which it needed to do. And the reason it needed to skip the queue was simply because it didn't have the fuel. Um, it was so bingo on fuel. Bingo on fuel, blooming it. Um, that's an American military one. Yeah, so low on fuel, it, it could not hold. Now, that wouldn't be acceptable in a normal airliner because it would be a case of, we'll take more fuel. And you'd get fined or whatever, uh, but Concorde couldn't do it. It was brimmed so much so that it would actually have to pump fuel around to ensure that it could actually take off and then move that fuel around once in flight. And yeah, oh god, yeah, we'll do some. We will be doing some Concorde. I just need to have a bit of thinking time to uh, get myself in the right frame of mind to fly that. I think there are a couple of videos on the channel uh, if you are interested in uh, old pointy then um, you know check them out leave a comment say yeah would love to see this uh, and uh, I'll make it happen so we're coming in on 27 now I'm gonna do a naughty I'm gonna do my normal naughty actually I'm gonna flick this button which is oops, which we briefly mentioned yesterday a landing flap 3 so that tells the aircraft that we, and we need to press this button as well, so COMP3. That tells the aircraft that we intend on landing with only flaps 3. 
um, rather than flat full, uh, which would be flat four, um, as you can hopefully see there. One, two, three, full. So it's not in degrees like uh, like the Boeings are, for example. Um, main reason for this, uh, doing an naughty is purely because we want to come off at Terminal 5, which is yonder end of uh, the airfield. No, hang on, wait a minute. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, Terminal 5 is in the west. Um, and if we're doing 100 and something knots on the runway, that is significantly quicker than even a Ryanair taxi at 30 knots uh, along Alpha or Bravo. So, um, yeah, if we can keep her rolling and come off more or less at Terminal 5, um, you know, hardly use any brake and so, so on, then, uh, in fact, so much so I'm not even going to arm the auto brake. Um, then it means, you know, a shorter taxi. <laughs> It's actually more efficient as well to do that, but it ties up the, the runway more. Right, I think we're going to cut the corner here. The 127S is the corner I'm going to cut. Click. Right, there we go. Shortcut enabled. Just because we haven't got no, two tons of fuel, that's enough to do a go around, actually. That's perfectly fine. So there we go. Uh, direct DIR. Um, and then your waypoint. And that, yeah. Just cut in the corner there. And that weird curve will sort itself out in a minute. In fact, so much so I'm just going to delete it. Or is it one three two? Be gone. Oops. Wait, why can't I get rid of this discontinuity? There we go. Thank you kindly. So that rounds out the corners. That hawky borkiness will sort its life out. Yes, it's just done that. And, uh, yeah, we're all good. Uh, I'm going to start bringing the speed back now. Woo, Nelly. What is our current speed? Two, let's go for 220. If we do any more aggressive, it's just going to violently pitch the nose up. I mean, this is still going to pitch the nose up, but... Oh, surprisingly, no, it didn't. Uh, let me just flick over on the charts. So, decision height, cat 3. Oh, it's 50 feet, not 200. Fifty, click. There we go. The cat three. Yes, it's two hundred for cat one. Of course, yeah, yeah. That's why I was then um, getting that wrong. Uh, and the pressure is one zero no one zero two zero one zero two zero. There we go. Oops, that was behind that spy. In fact, you know what? Dooby 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 click. There we go. Since uh, we're not actually online, there's not a huge amount of point in having that spy on, is there? So let's keep bringing this speed back, see what I mean about it pitching the nose up. And we'll arm approach. And we'll keep bringing this speed back. Now as soon as we hit the green dot, we can drop the slats. 
Uh, and then at that point, we can the the speed will start coming back because the drags increase, um, and uh, yeah, we'll be good. We'll be good then because everything will start coming back nice and quick. Just keep this uh, D cell going. So approach is armed. We'll arm the second autopilot. That makes us cat three. There we go. Flat one. Yeah, and F6 is going to really, really struggle now because there's just too many objects. So we'll stay on the inside view. Uh, it was about 150, wasn't it? Uh, again, green line, flat two. And gear down as well, just because we're, we're a bit high, a bit fast. So getting the gear down and everything early increases your drag. Um, gives us more of a fighting chance of actually slow. See, this is what I mean. It's just spooled the engines up when we're clearly going too fast and too high. And we are actually a bit fast. We'll arm the speed brakes. We'll take flat three a bit earlier than we should. Uh, so yeah, auto brake none. Uh, and we'll do medium reverse. So landing lights can come on. That's all fine. Don't need any of that yet. Controls are me. So there we are, flap 3 configured, rather than flap full. Again, this isn't part of the SOP for BA at all, uh, but we've been flying long enough and I think uh, this flight is going to get uh, rejected anyway for the points make prizes for BA Virtual because of the all the overspeeds and the Hawky balkiness we had with the flaps and everything. So, we are still a bit fast, but I'm not actually overly worried. Oh, we are a bit high as well. Okay, now I am a bit worried. And we have a smidge of a tailwind as well, which doesn't really help, but. I know, I know. I'm going to go manual spoilers. Shush. Shush. Yes, I know the spoilers are out because I put them out. Annoying aircraft. Yeah, we're very fast, but I'm not too bothered. In fact, I'm going to take auto brake low. Spoilers are still out. I know glide slope, we're coming in flat because we're fast. So, whoa! So I don't want to slam it into the floor. Yeah, continue. Stuff it, why not? Ooh, that was a bit heavy. Why am I not getting reverse? Why the reverse is not coming out? There we go. I do need them. And I also said we want to come off at Terminal 5, but I want to come off at Terminal 5, not the M25. Reverse away. Brakes away. APU master on, APU bleed on, and we'll come off at this high speed here, uh, which is going to be what 
outfit sign. Oh, does this do a really annoying turn? Oh, and there's the rain. Stuff it, let's kill the frame rate. So landing lights away and can be retracted. Transponder to TA only, weather radar off. Uh, runway turn off can come off and nose light to taxi. We can fire up our good friend a poo and clear that switch. Yeah, that wasn't my best landing. In fact, it was an absolutely terrible landing, but there we go. I've had that kind of a day. Oh. And there we go, Terminal 5. Gently, gently on the brakes. Don't know what the textures are doing. God blimey. And then we'll park up somewhere here on the right, as I uh, like to do. So, lights off. Well, that's probably less relevant, actually, if we've got... Oh, we haven't got auto dock, have we? Here yeah, it looks as good as any. Oop. And let's try and actually get a reasonable bit of parking going here. <laughs> oh, that's the thought that counts, isn't it? There we go. Parking brake on, engines away. Doors. Can't do anything yet. There we go. Cargo doors open. Uh, control J, Shift J, because I can never remember which one it is. Oh, is it not working? Ah, oh, there we go. Going the wrong way, matey boy. There we go, here, here it comes. See what, well, that's not the worst parking I've done. Not great, clearly it's not great, but it's absolutely not the worst. Um, okay, so let's see what's going on with BA Virtual then. Um, I'm absolutely not expecting this to have uh, passed the verification, but let's have a quick look. Um, if nothing else, it'll be interesting to show you actually what happened. So if I would go center screen on there. <laughs> Guess where the problems happened? Yeah. Has that actually been accepted? I think it has. You can, it's just, uh, that should be two flat lines effectively. Well, yeah, ground speed obviously depends slightly on wind, so, so that's fairly, that's okay here. Uh, that is not okay. <laughs> and that definitely isn't okay. 
Uh, and it happened twice, as you can see. In fact, no, actually, that time was when we ended up upside down for no apparent reason. That it just one frame straight and level. All things were happy, just recovered, you know, been recovered for a few minutes. What's that about? five minutes there so we got back on track and then one frame later we were upside down uh, and then I, I cheesed it and decided to add an extra 20 flight levels on uh, in the hope of saving a smidge of fuel um, but there we go cool hope you enjoyed uh, suggestions recommendations blah 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 down below in the comments and uh, see you on the next one